and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Bill Sims, who is an over in an equally sunny, hot Columbia, South Carolina. How are you doing, Bill? Doing good, buddy. Nice to be with you today. Yeah, and um, and and Bill is an author, keynote speaker, and uh, a motivational safety speaker, and author of this great book that we're going to talk about today, which is called. Okay, and the book is called "The Green Beans and Ice Cream Book: How Learn How to Motivate with Positive Reinforcement," and uh, and that's what we're going to talk today about. Is this is your book? Um, so let's even start just um, straightforwardly, Bill. Um, what, what is the genesis of this book? I had, um, you know, you, you were obviously like known for the safety and zero injuries and all of that. Kind of, where did this book come from? Sure. Yeah. So it's it's really um, kind of a foundational piece that everything I do branches off of. And the the I guess the first thing to say is while I'm I'm known in the safety world as a um, a presenter there, the book is purposefully not non-safety. I use some safety examples, but the book is really for anyone who has to lead other people and change their behavior. I think the way I describe it, you know, when I'm riding on an airplane, people say, what do you do? Uh, I, I say it this way. Hey, I'm the global subject matter expert for green beans and ice cream. <laughs> and I know I'm a global subject matter, matter expert because I'm the guy who thought it up, right? So uh, the, the idea behind the book is simple, but very powerful and universal. Mm -hmm. We are really, really good telling our employees and our kids and our students in school what they did wrong. Yep. Maybe where we need a little help is telling them what they did right. And my mom figured it out when I was a little kid. She said, son, if you eat your green beans, you can have ice cream. So it's when we focus on the positive in people, performance moves off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one, though. You know, I love ice cream, but I'm not too hot in green beans. So I, I've never been a bit of a conundrum, though. I, in fairness, my parents used to make force me to eat my cabbage before I got my dessert. There um, you go. Yeah, exactly. Um, so so. Um, Bill, one of the things is you said your book's about for people uh, to manage, help people who are managing or leading people. I always think it's one of the interesting things about you know, the way the way business is set up. Our, our career paths are normally you go from being something and then you move. If you're good at it, you might move up to managing other people doing that something. And and that's always just seems to be the career path and stuff. And, and I always question when people used to come to me and I'd say, you know, what do you want to do next? Oh, I'd like to manage people. I'm always like, why? Why do you want to manage people? Because yeah. I would always say, because managing people is a lot different than you think. So I think we send a lot of people into these into these positions very, very unprepared for the reality. 100 percent. You know, um, I talk a lot about. Um, the way you get promoted, most people, to becoming a manager, um, you know, one day you're the guy on the line that um, turns the wrench the fastest and turns out the most work of anybody, or you're the salesperson that outperforms everybody else. And then that's one day, that's day one. And then the next day you get tapped on the shoulder and, uh, hey, John, guess what? Tomorrow you're a supervisor. Yeah. And what we failed to give them was any real training in leadership skills, the soft skills, which are really the hard skills, yeah. right? So it, it, is it any wonder so many managers fail to become leaders, right? And, and a study was done, pretty interesting, major executives across the, the world were asked um, if they'd been given, for instance, safety leadership, which is a a, you know, a branch off of the, the whole leadership tree. Had they been given effective training to to lead safety effectively? And only 4% replied that they had. Yeah. So that's 96% of our leaders, presidents, vice presidents, superintendents that haven't been given the training. And I suspect that number holds true across all kinds of leaders, all kinds of managers, sales, whatever field you're in. 
Yeah. And and then, as you said, um, human then human nature takes over. And you're right. Here's always been my issue with, you know, the, the performance review. And I know I'm excuse me, the audience, if I'm repeating myself, but, you know, the way we do performance reviews here, we have like once a year or whatever. And then we say, hey, Bill, uh, great, Bill. Uh, here's a couple of things you did well this year. Now, here's 54 things that you didn't and you need to work on. And our focus always goes. It always it's human nature. We always go to the negative or the problem or the issue. And, and so how do you how do you turn that around? Yeah, yeah, it's great. You know, I always say when when you analyze what mom did to change my behavior, she pinpointed and communicated the behavior she wanted very specifically. When I executed on that behavior, ate those nasty, slimy green beans, I got reinforced with a smile, a hug, and a big bowl of ice cream. And hello, I got all those reinforcers immediately, not a million safe kid hours later. <laughs> Or, or, or I didn't have to wait for annual kid performance review at the end of the year to see if mom was going to give me one, two, or three licks of ice cream. <laughs> what we know from the science, and it's bulletproof, there's no arguing with it. It's 100 years old. The, the science states that if you want to change my behavior, the reinforcer has to occur within 10 seconds of the behavior, mm. which makes performance reviews absolutely useless. Uh, they don't happen frequently enough. Mm -hmm. They're not specific enough. And the consequences are out of whack. One, two or three percent pay raise. Come on. At the end of the year, not enough to make a difference. Yeah. There are far better ways to reinforce and improve behavior than an annual performance review. Right. Yeah. And and I like it's, it's funny. It's funny you're just saying about the signs and the reinforcement it kind of sounds like dog training in some ways because we just got a new rescue recently. And you're yeah. right. It's that. The two things you have, the things you have to do with the dog is you, they have to clearly understand the instruction and then you have to reward them the minute they do it, right? If they don't understand the instruction or you don't reward them enough, you're rewarding something completely different. But your point is, it's funny, like it's the same with, with humans. You're, you're correct. It's like, if we get positive feedback immediately and we get that reward, you know, then our whole physiologic physiology is different. Then if yeah. you, and then if, if I come up to you a couple of days later and say, oh, yeah, good, good job on that, Bill. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. And, you know, you're you're spot on with the illustration of, of the like the likelihood or, or the likeness to training a, a dog. I've, I've switched to saying it's just like training a horse, because <laughs> if I'm going to be compared, I'd rather be compared to a horse than a canine. But that's just personal opinion, you know, um, and, and it is the same. The reinforcer has to happen immediately. You know, this is why so many of the other things that are done that are just, excuse me, they're backwards. Um, mm -hmm. Employee of the month, employee of the year, employee of the quarter. These are the worst things you can do to your company's culture. Um, you know, when we when we when we say that one employee is employee of the year, we might, and this is a big might, we might have made that person a winner. But by default, we made everybody else a loser, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, you should have employees of the moment uh, because if you can't point mm -hmm. out to me what every employee did at least one time a day that advanced the company's mission, something's wrong with your measurement system, something's wrong with, with the design of your system. Mm -hmm. So the, the performance review, it's, it's, it's a sacred cow. We need to turn it into hamburger. <laughs> Uh, the same with employee of the month and of the quarter and of the year, far better ways to do it than, than that. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. And, um, and then the, the, the part that you just uh, referenced there, it's that, it's that idea of catching people doing something right or doing something positive or good. And again, this is something that we have to practice because it doesn't come naturally. I mean, this is the crazy thing about us as humans like, is we can notice all day long. Oh, I'm not sure I like the way Bill did that. Not sure, but if I'm, but it's different. Like, oh, wow, that was really cool. What Bill just said, I need to go and tell him right now. That that is something that we have to learn. It is a learned, and that's what my workshops and keynotes really help companies with. So the book is sort of the starting point, and quite often companies realize, well, maybe we need Bill for a keynote, or we need him for a series of workshops. Um, you know what you've described is a is a terminology. There's a name for it. It's the way we def we manage by default. And every big company I've presented for 
agrees that this is the way they manage, right? They, mm -hmm. Their managers manage behavior using leave alone zap. We leave people alone and say nothing when they do it right, providing no feedback. We zap them when they make a mistake, right? And, um, you know, if you, if you want to get a classic movie on leave alone zap, uh, what is it? The Devil Wears Prada, great, okay. movie, right? Um, the, the boss there is classic leave alone zap. One, one uh, work, worker quit her job uh, as an attorney in New York City, took a $100,000 pay cut to become a waitress. And her logic was, you know, when, um, when I make a mistake, my boss says something 100% of the time. When I put forth extra effort, he says nothing 99% of the time. So there's your leave along with that, right? She said, at least when I put a, a plate of food on their table, I'll get a thank you and a tip. And, um, you know, that I think that that says a lot just hearing where she's coming from, right? People are People are burned out and, and the pandemics made things actually a lot worse than they were before. They were never great. Um, we, we've, we've always had a, a real Darth globally in delivery of positive feedback, positive reinforcement. It's the number one driver of employee engagement, morale, innovation, everything. And it's also, I don't care who the biggest company is, if they're honest and they open up their, their latest Gallup survey or whatever engagement survey, it's going to be one of their worst scores. It's going to be in the toilet. So mm -hmm. number one thing that drives performance is the thing people get the least of. Why is that? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a, it's a it's a fascinating question. You know, why is that? You know, I would say a lot of it is to do with both human nature and just the way, you know, business and corporate corporate life has has developed. Um, but I think you're 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 correct as well about the pandemic because I think it's done a lot to people psychologically. It also had people, um, obviously they were dislocated in terms of a lot of people were at home, were removed and all of that. But I think more than that, I think it gave them an insight into their own lives. I mean, maybe a little bit of introspection. And I think maybe some, maybe people have kind of raised their, their, their barriers a little bit saying, no, no, I'm, I, I, I need to expect more from maybe myself, but also from other people. 100 percent. Um, you know, if you, if you just take a look at it, more people are working from home than ever before. So if and so that means fewer people are going to the office than ever before. And CEOs are struggling with this because we built this great ivory tower and we spent all this money. We need to have people filling it up, you know, and I'm sorry, that Pandora's box has been opened and you can forget trying to roll the clock back. Yep. Because when behavior has changed, and it has, working from home, there's one and only one reason that that behavior has changed, and that is positive reinforcement. So if you think about all the positively reinforcing things about working at home, being with your rescue dog instead of being in your car, in traffic, like right? There's just one, being with your kid, being with your, your spouse, the people you love, and, and all of these reinforcers well, I'm sure there are people that are quiet quitting and there are people milking mm -hmm. the system, you know, but there are software tools for that. Um, I, I think um, hands down, people decided, you know what? If I can if I can end this two hours a day of my life that I'm wasting yep. in a vehicle, I can channel that energy into doing a better job at work. And I, I think it's great. I mean, I'm, best best years of my life were when my girls were, you know, small and I was able to work at home at that point. And um, some of the best memories that I that I have. Yeah, no, I I would agree with you. I I initially like way back when was never really a fan of working from home when it first started, like way back. But I kind of I I, I call myself the reform smoker of uh, remote working because now I think it's fantastic. But I think uh, and I agree with you. I was able to uh, watch my son grow up because I worked at home, which was fantastic. But I think the thing that employers need to understand now is those days are gone where I'm going to relocate myself to be near some big building in some expensive area, either have a two hour commute or buy a ridiculously expensive home that's not worth it. And guess what happens? The minute there's a turn, there's a downturn. What happens? Oh, I'm out the door. 
um, because of cost cutting. Now I'm stuck in a high cost area with a high cost mortgage in a place that I want to be in the first place. And I think people are selecting where they want to live before they're selecting who they want to work for. And to your point, I think that's why uh, organizations are going to have to do a lot better job of wooing people to join them. Yeah, consequences drive behavior, right? That's a chapter in my book. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and and, and um, that is a big problem. That what you are, what the math that you went through, mm-hmm. the cost of housing versus the commute, all of these things. So wh- what we know is that human behavior follows very predictable laws most of the time that behavioral science has uncovered for more than 100 years. They're rock solid. They're bulletproof. Uh, if you want more people to show up at work, make work a more positively reinforcing place to be, right? <laughs> if Hello, there's a thought. And that starts with understanding how to give meaningful, positive feedback, not the good job, good job. Thank you, thank you, thank you, good job. That is not positive reinforcement. That's insulting. Um, so there's a, you know, there's a, but, but here's the thing unlock it, figure it out. And we've seen companies um, save hundreds of millions of dollars in improved performance. So what is that new model going to look like? Um, You know what I think it's going to look like? We're going to work from home. We're going to come together in networks. And then we're going to have fun face-to-face events, team building things where we build those relationships stronger. And then we're back apart and, and we're going to be flexible and nimble. Think, think of what we could do with all this uh, corporate real estate that's basically sitting empty. Yeah. Yep. We, we could turn that into a whole lot better value add for every company. Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. So give me, uh, give, give the audience a couple of examples of what good positive um, reinforcement or feedback looks like? Because, I mean, as you said, it's not just saying, hey, good job, and then moving on. What is, what is, what is re- what's a really good example of positive feedback? Yeah, I wish, I wish we had more time because there's, you know, there's a longer story here to illustrate it. But I'll just give you the kernel of it. Um, there's, there's, there's so many levels of what you can do and what you shouldn't do. And the book is, is, is equally about what doesn't work Mm-hmm. And what you should do instead. So here's here's why T-shirts uh, and pizza parties are not generally positively reinforcing for most people. Here's what to do instead. So it's 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 all about science meets business in the real world. But I, I would say from a basic starting point, one level, um, it, three things. I know who you are. Here's what you did. Here's why that matters. In other words, the first step is we've got to invest time to know who our employees are. Who are their kids? Do they have a rescue dog? Who is it that they really want to spend time with? That's number one. We as leaders are obligated and obliged to do that. And we need to have it in our phone. And we need to know that stuff better than we know the company's 401k plan or the workforce harassment policy, for goodness sake. And then we need to pick something very specific that that person did. And it is not an Academy Award winning show performance. It, it is simply something they do every day that makes a difference. We need to pick one thing. We need to tell them what that one thing is. And then we need to do the third thing, which is probably the hardest of all. We need to tell them why that matters. Connected mm-hmm. with a vision or mission bigger than themselves and show how they've made a real difference there. And those three elements, um, you'll hear me come back in my workshop time and time again with stories. Okay, here they are again, right? And here's a few more, here's the fifth, sixth, seventh. But I'd say just to review, as time runs out here, I know who you are, here's what you did, here's why that matters. Yeah, no, I I love that. And it's also, um, it's, it's, I guess what I love about that is, it's very, it's a simple model. I didn't mean, that's not to say it's easy because simple doesn't always equate to easy. Um, but it's a, it's a simple one. It's a simple one to follow and something that you could, you know, practice and become like repeatable over time. So it becomes part of your DNA. hundred yeah, percent. It's got to be simple or people won't be able to do it. Right. And um, I like to say, this is not rocket science. It's behavioral science and it's pretty freaking cool stuff. So I'm, 
I'm stoked about it. The other other website they can go to, uh, yeah, you've been talking about the book. Yeah. That one's that one's at greenbeanbook.com, greenbeanbook.com. And they can also go here, my keynote, What Makes a Great Leader Great? Um, that's found at beyondzeroinjuries.com. Just mm -hmm. spell it out, beyondzeroinjuries.com. Click See Bill in Action. It's free. Um, and it'll give people a, a, a lot more than what we've had time to do here today. But this has been fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks again, Bill. Like Bill's information will be below this. I think you're on a great. I think you're on a great mission, Bill. Because as we said, I think people have different expectations today, uh, and if if businesses aren't going to learn how to do this properly, people are going to vote with their feet, like they always did. Hundred percent. And the newest generation, the Zillennials. <laughs> will vote faster than anybody else. They'll vote before they even take the job because yeah, they've read it on the internet. Exactly, exactly. Well, listen, thanks again, Bill. Fantastic insights. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.